Hi everyone, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. In this series of videos, we are taking a walkthrough of WSET Level 2. And this is part four, so if you haven't checked out the other parts yet in this series, check them out and then come back. If you're new to this channel, welcome, I'm the Grape Explorer. On this channel, we do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings. So if you're interested in all things wine, consider subscribing. Part four of part six then, and part four is of course about learning outcome number four. And that outcome is to know the style and quality of wines produced from regionally important black and white grape varieties. And in the case of this particular learning outcome, this is another outcome where there are gonna be a significant number of questions in your exam. Around a fifth of the questions are based upon learning outcome number four. So it's really important that we start to understand some other regionally important varieties as there are gonna be questions about them for sure. As with previous videos, the way that this is structured is I'm gonna go through the assessment criteria, and then once we dig into each assessment criteria individually, we'll start to create some questions based upon it. Let's get straight into what the assessment criteria for outcome number four is all about. You need to be able to describe the characteristics of the regionally important black and white grape varieties. You need to be able to describe the styles and quality of wines from the regionally important black and white grape varieties from specific GIs, geographical indicators. And you need to be able to state the meaning of the labeling terms that would indicate style and quality of wines produced from these regionally important grapes. So as you can see, it's very similar in structure uh, compared to learning outcome number three, where we were looking at the principal grape varieties, but now we are gonna be going through quite a few more. So let's jump straight into assessment criteria number one then and start to look at the characteristics of those regionally important grapes. When it comes to the characteristics, we are of course talking about colour, tannin level, sugar and therefore potential alcohol content, the acidity, the aromas and the flavours. And what about those all important grapes? Well for the black grapes, as you can see here, there are a number that you need to be familiar with. You need to understand about Gamay, which is popular in Beaujolais, Grenache or Garnacha, popular in France and Spain, Tempranillo, which of course is a key component in the wines from Rioja, Nebbiolo, which contributes to Barolo, Barbera, which is also popular in Piedmont, Sangiovese, which you might find in something like a Chianti from Tuscany, Corvina, which can be found in the wines of Valpolicella, Montepulciano, which of course is popular with Montepulciano d'Abruzzo. Zinfandel or Primitivo, dependent upon where in the world you are. Pinotage, Carmenere and Malbec rounding out those black grapes. And then let's move on to the white grapes. Where here you can expect things like Chenin Blanc, popular in France and South Africa. Semillon, popular in France and Australia. Viognier, which is popular in the Northern Rhone as well as other parts of the world. Gewürztraminer, popular in a number of different countries. Vidicchio and Cortese, Garganega, Fiano, all popular in Italy, as well as Alberino and rounding it out, Fermint, which you would find in the wines of Tokai. So what you're gonna learn, of course, are those basic characteristics. So your questions are very much gonna be based on taking one of those grapes and then being able to talk about the characteristics of it. What's the tannin like? What's the acidity like? And so as with the other sessions, I've created some questions to get you comfortable with that question format. So which of the following would best describe a Malbec? Would it be light-bodied with medium or high tannin? Would it be full-bodied with a low tannin? Would it be full-bodied with medium or high tannin? or would it be light bodied with low tannin? When we come onto the geographical indicators, you'll see that we're very much gonna be talking about Argentina when it comes to Melbeck. And Melbeck is of course a, one of the black grapes um, that we're learning as a regionally important grape that has a particularly full body when in the glass and is, that is accompanied by medium or high tannins. Moving on to another, which of the following grapes is the odd one out? Is it Tempranillo? Is it Cortese? Is it Malbec? Or is it Sangiovese? Now the interesting thing here is to work out well why might one be odd from others, but we did just go through the list of black grapes versus white grapes, so perhaps that's a bit of a clue as to what the answer is here. The wines of Gavi, which are made from Cortese, are in fact white wines, which would make the Cortese grape the odd one out. And when we're thinking about the characteristics of the grape, we may also be starting to think about where some of those grapes are grown as well. Obviously there is a learning outcome about geographical indicators, 
but we might be starting to think about what suits a warmer climate than a cooler climate. And this next question is very much related to that. So which grape was developed specially for the hot South African conditions? Was it Pinotage? Was it Zinfandel? Was it Nebbiolo? Or was it Merlot? Pinotage, when it comes to WSC2, very much focuses on its real home, which is South Africa. That was created especially in the 20th century for that market. We're now going to move on to some more characteristic type questions, and this is very much a characteristic question based on the appearance of a wine. So which of the following best describes the colour of a youthful Valpolicella Classico? Would it be purple, gold, amber or tawny? One of the things you're going to be needing to do first off, of course, is recalling back, well, where is Valpolicella and what type of wines might they be producing? Valpolicella uses the Corvina grape. It's a black grape used to make red wines. And that means there's going to be a couple of the answers here which we are going to be able to discount because things like gold and amber are not going to be the correct answer. But of course, we're also talking about a youthful wine and therefore purple would be the appropriate colour here. Staying on the theme of wine tasting then, but using one of our other senses, this next question is all about aromas. Tobacco and tar are descriptors which are used with which of the following wines? Is it Barolo? Is it Gavi? Is it Suave? Or is it Chianti? And again, what this question has done is pitted two red wine styles against two white wine styles. Very much the structure that you can expect at level two, just gets you familiar with that style of question. So here we're talking about tobacco and tar type aromas, quite heady, quite deep, not going to be necessarily associated with white wines at all, which is going to leave us with Barolo and Chianti. And in the case of this one, tar is a famous descriptor alongside tobacco when it comes to Barolo. So with an idea about some of the characteristic type questions you could get asked, let's move on to learning outcome two, where you're going to be able to describe the styles and quality of wines from the regionally important specified geographical indicators. Now I'm not going to go through these line by line. What these slides are giving you are some of the key areas with which you need to be able to associate particular grapes. So I will just pick out a couple on each slide. So, so Gamay, I did mention earlier on about Beaujolais, and that could mean it's labelled Beaujolais, it might be labelled Beaujolais Village, or it could be labelled Beaujolais Cru, dependent upon the quality and the style of the wine. Similarly with Garnache or Garnacha, it's very much going to depend on where it's from. In Spain, it's referred to as Garnacha. But in France, in particular, it's popular in the Southern Rhone, used for blends. Then for something like Tempranillo, we are, of course, talking about the wines from Rioja, as well as the wines of Ribera del Duero and Catalonia. And we've got some of those labelling terms there, dependent upon the times that have been spent in barrel and in bottle, going from Yovan right through to Gran Reserva. Nebbiolo is of course our grape associated with Barolo where we just had a question on that and the Barbera grape is associated with wines made in Asti. I also just talked a little bit there about Chianti and that is where Sangiovese is grown and contributes to the wines. We've then got Corvina of course I covered off a Valpolicella question for you. Montepulciano, also an Italian wine, as well as Zinfandel Primitivo, depending on where you are in the world, Zinfandel for California and Primitivo for Italy. And finally, we had a question about Pinotage as well. So we learned that that is from South Africa. We have Carmenere from Chile and Malbec from Argentina to round out the black grapes. And then moving on to the whites, we've got the Chenin Blancs, which will be from the Loire or South Africa, where it's also popularly known as Steen. We've got our Semillon from Bordeaux, Saturn, as well as those Australian produced wines in the likes of Hunter Valley and Barossa Valley. We've got our Viognier's of the Northern Rhone. We have our Gewurztraminas from Alsace, our Vadicchio's and our Cortese's to round out all of those white grapes that are covered here. So again, the questions are very much gonna be focused on you being able to identify what's important in the grape from a characteristic perspective, but you do need to recall these specific areas as well, because you're gonna be asked questions along the lines of, this area, X, produces which grape? And then you'll have your selection of four questions. Let's jump into a few examples then to get you comfortable with that format. In the Northern Rhone, Syrah is permitted to be blended with which white grape? Is it Chenin Blanc, Viognier, Nebbiolo, or Chardonnay? And this is where I call back to what's going to be really helpful with being able to pair grape with region. Because we just covered off that Viognier was from the Northern Rhone, where of course it is blended with Syrah where it's permitted. 
Mourinho is popular in which wine producing area? Is it Mendoza, the Loire, Tuscany or Rias Baijas? And here again is an example of something that through your studies you will learn where this is regionally important, particularly in the northwest of Spain. And that means we're looking at Rias Baijas as the answer here. Now, Vouvray AC produces wines from which white grape? Is it Chenin Blanc, Riesling, Gewürztraminer or Torontes? And what's interesting here is the geographical indicators didn't necessarily go down to individual areas and appellations, but the book will. And so you're going to be able to learn that Vouvray is an AC that produces wine made from Chenin Blanc and it makes those wines in the Loire Valley. Let's keep on track with this type of question. The white wines from Suave are made from which grape? Is it Nebbiolo? Is it Sangiovese? Is it Cortese? Or is it Garganega? So this is the sort of question you really need to get familiar with. And it actually might be a good idea to use some flashcards here and write some regions on one set of cards and some grapes on the others and almost play like a game of pairs. Just get really familiar with what's grown and where. So in the case of this one, the answer is Garganega. We'll, we'll move on to another one. Gewürztraminer would be used in which of the following? Would it be an Alsace Grand Cru? Would it be a Bordeaux Superior? Would it be a Fiano di Avellino? Or would it be a Tokai? And again, this question, very similar along the lines of the previous ones we've seen. We've got the name of a grape. We've now got the names of four different areas where it could be grown, which is right, which is wrong. But what's perhaps trickier about this particular question is all the answers could be associated with white wines, of course. But we did see on our earlier slide where we were talking about Gewürztraminer, the popular GI that you'll be covering on your course is Alsace. And so it would be the Alsace Grand Cru as the right answer. Now, when we had the slide on Tempranillo, we were talking about particular styles. And I mentioned something there around barrel aging and bottle aging. And this next question is all related to that. So which of the following is the youngest style of wine in Rioja? Would it be Gran Reserva? Would it be Criantha? Would it be Joven? Or would it be Reserva? Coming into an exam with a question like this is always going to be tricky, of course, where you're just starting to learn about bottle aging and oak aging requirements. But the clue with this one is Joven in Spanish actually means young. So it's a pretty good indicator that this is the youngest style. Okay, so there's quite a few examples as we've gone through assessment criteria number two. Now, assessment criteria number three, which is all about being able to state the meaning of labeling terms indicating style and quality of wines, is in a way a little bit related to, to question number two. And there are some obvious crossovers here with some of the question styles. But I have created some examples here that are perhaps about styles of different wines and the grapes that might be used to produce those styles. So Tokai Azu is made from grapes that have been affected by what? Is it mildew? Is it grey rot? Is it frost? Or is it noble rot? The more scientific name is Botrytis. Um, it is deliberately done in, in certain vineyards. The, the Botrytis adds certain qualities to the grapes. And it's also known in the vineyards as noble rot. So that would be the answer here. And we're going to finish on a true or false question. As I've said before, it isn't always multiple choice. They can be true or false as well. So true or false, Chenin Blanc is used to produce both dry and sweet styles of wine. Is this true or is this false? Uh, we had a little question earlier about Vouvray and the fact that they produced wines made from the Chenin Blanc grape. You can actually find a number of different styles in the Loire Valley. They go from sparkling, dry styles and sweet styles when it comes to Chenin Blanc. Incredibly versatile grape. So the correct answer here is indeed true. So that was part four. That was learning outcome four. As I said at the start of this video, if you haven't checked out the other sections, please do so. I'll be back soon with part five. But for now, I'm going to say cheers. See you soon. Cheers.